What if I told you that the most dangerous place to be isn't a physical location, but a state of mind? Imagine being trapped, not by walls, but by invisible chains, chains forged by your own thoughts, emotions, and fears. This is the reality for many who find themselves unable to leave toxic relationships. It's a paradox, isn't it? Knowing something is bad for you, yet feeling unable to walk away. So, why do we stay? As the philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche once said, he who fights with monsters should be careful lest he thereby become a monster. Staying in a toxic relationship often feels like fighting a battle you can't win, and over time, it can start to change who you are at your core. But the psychology behind this is both fascinating and complex, and understanding it is the first step toward breaking free. Before we dive deep into the hidden forces that keep us tethered to toxic relationships, do something powerful for yourself. Hit that like button, subscribe, and join a community dedicated to growth and self-discovery. The insights we're about to explore could be the key to unlocking the chains that hold you back. Ready to uncover the truth? Let's get started. Lesson one, fear of being alone. The fear of being alone is one of the most powerful forces that keeps people anchored in toxic relationships. It's not just the fear of physical solitude, it's the dread of emotional emptiness, the anxiety of facing life without a partner, even if that partner is causing harm. This fear can be so overwhelming that it overshadows the pain of the toxic relationship itself. In many cases, the thought of being alone triggers deep-seated insecurities and societal pressures, making the idea of leaving seem almost impossible. When you've been in a relationship for a long time, your identity often becomes intertwined with that of your partner. The idea of separating from them feels like losing a part of yourself. This fear is magnified by the worry that you may never find someone else that you'll be left to navigate life's challenges on your own. Society often reinforces this fear with constant reminders that being in a relationship, even a bad one, is preferable to being single. This fear of being alone can cause you to rationalize the toxicity, convincing yourself that things aren't that bad or that you can tolerate the dysfunction for the sake of companionship. It leads to a cycle of denial where you downplay the negatives and focus on the few positives, all to avoid the terror of loneliness. But the truth is, this fear is a powerful illusion, one that keeps you stuck in a situation that's draining your emotional and mental well-being. Recognizing the fear of being alone is the first step toward breaking free. It's about understanding that solitude doesn't have to be synonymous with loneliness and that being alone can actually be an opportunity for growth, self-discovery, and healing. By confronting this fear, you can begin to see that the real danger lies not in being alone, but in staying in a relationship that's slowly eroding your sense of self. Lesson two, hope for change. Hope is a double-edged sword in toxic relationships. On one hand, it's what keeps the relationship alive, fueling the belief that things might get better. On the other hand, it's the very thing that traps you in a cycle of disappointment and pain. The hope for change is powerful. It convinces you to stay just a little longer, to endure just a little more, because maybe, just maybe, the person you're with will transform into the partner you've always wanted them to be. This hope often stems from the early stages of the relationship, when things were better, when the potential for a healthy, loving partnership seemed within reach. You remember those moments of kindness, the promises made, and the glimpses of the person you fell in love with. These memories can be incredibly compelling, making it difficult to accept the reality of the situation as it is now. You cling to the belief that those good times can come back if only you try harder, if only you're patient enough. However, this hope can be a trap, keeping you in a toxic relationship long after it's clear that things are not improving. 
The problem with hoping for change is that it often places the responsibility for your happiness on someone else, someone who may not be willing or able to change. It's a form of emotional bargaining where you trade your present well-being for the possibility of a better future that may never come. Recognizing when hope is no longer serving you is crucial. It's about understanding that while people can change, it's not your job to fix them, nor should your happiness depend on their transformation. Realizing this can be incredibly freeing, allowing you to shift your focus from what might be to what is, and empowering you to make decisions that prioritize your well-being. By letting go of the hope for change in others, you open the door to positive change within yourself. Lesson 3. Emotional Dependence Emotional dependence is a subtle yet potent force that binds people to toxic relationships. It's the deep-seated belief that you need the other person to feel complete, secure, or even just okay. When you're emotionally dependent, your sense of self-worth becomes entangled with the relationship, making it nearly impossible to imagine life without your partner, even when that relationship is causing you pain. This dependence often develops over time as you start to rely on your partner for validation, comfort and emotional support, gradually losing touch with your own inner strength. In toxic relationships, emotional dependence can be particularly insidious. The highs and lows of the relationship create a kind of emotional roller coaster that can be addictive. The moments of affection or attention from your partner, however fleeting, become incredibly meaningful, providing a temporary respite from the turmoil. These brief glimpses of positivity keep you hooked as you chase the emotional highs in hopes of escaping the lows. It's a cycle that's difficult to break because it's built on a foundation of need rather than mutual respect and love. This dependence is further reinforced by the fear of emotional instability without the relationship. You might think, what if I can't handle the emotional fallout of a breakup? What if I spiral into loneliness or depression? These fears make the prospect of leaving seem even more daunting, leading you to cling to the relationship as a source of emotional stability, even when it's anything but stable. Breaking free from emotional dependence involves reclaiming your sense of self, and recognizing that your emotional well-being does not have to be tied to another person. It's about learning to nurture yourself, to find validation and comfort from within rather than seeking it externally. This process can be challenging, especially after years of reliance, but it's also incredibly empowering. By rebuilding your emotional independence, you not only free yourself from the grip of a toxic relationship, but also rediscover your inner resilience and capacity for self-love. Lesson 4. Attachment to Memories Attachment to memories is one of the most deceptive traps in a toxic relationship. It's the longing for what once was. The good times, the shared experiences, the moments that made you fall in love in the first place. These memories can be so vivid and powerful that they overshadow the present reality, making it difficult to see the relationship for what it has become. You find yourself clinging to the past, hoping that somehow you can recapture those fleeting moments of happiness and connection. In many toxic relationships, the early stages are often filled with excitement, passion and a sense of deep connection. These memories are imprinted on your mind, creating a powerful emotional bond that's hard to break. When the relationship starts to deteriorate, you might find yourself constantly reminiscing about those early days, using them as a benchmark for what the relationship could be again. This attachment to memories can blind you to the ongoing harm and dysfunction, leading you to stay in the relationship far longer than you should. What makes this attachment so potent is the hope it carries. You believe that if things were good once, they can be good again. This hope keeps you anchored in the past, preventing you from fully confronting the present. You might find yourself making excuses for your partner's behavior, convincing yourself that the relationship is worth saving because of all the good times you've had. 
However, this attachment is often more about holding on to an idealized version of the past than facing the reality of the present. To break free from this attachment, it's essential to separate the memories from the current state of the relationship. Acknowledge the good times for what they were, beautiful moments in the past, but recognize that they do not define the relationship's present or future. Letting go of this attachment allows you to see the relationship clearly, to evaluate it based on its current dynamics rather than its history. This clarity is crucial for making decisions that prioritize your well-being and help you move forward, either within the relationship or beyond it. Lesson 5. Low Self-Esteem Low self-esteem is one of the most crippling factors that can keep you trapped in a toxic relationship. When you don't believe in your own worth, it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that you don't deserve any better. You might convince yourself that the mistreatment or dysfunction you're experiencing is somehow justified, or worse, that it's the best you can hope for. This belief can make it incredibly difficult to muster the courage to leave as you've been conditioned to accept less than you deserve. In toxic relationships, low self-esteem is often both a cause and a consequence. The relationship itself can erode your sense of self-worth over time, especially if your partner belittles you, manipulates you, or constantly undermines your confidence. As your self-esteem diminishes, so does your belief in your ability to stand on your own, making you increasingly dependent on the relationship, however toxic it may be. This creates a vicious cycle where your self-worth continues to deteriorate, further entrenching you in the toxic dynamics. This lack of self-esteem can also lead you to internalize blame for the problems in the relationship. You might start to believe that if only you were better, more attractive, more successful, more accommodating, then the relationship would improve. This self-blame can keep you stuck in a state of trying to fix yourself or the relationship rather than recognizing that the issue may lie with the relationship itself. Breaking free from the grip of low self-esteem requires a profound shift in how you view yourself. It's about reclaiming your sense of worth independent of how you're treated by others. This process often begins with small steps, such as acknowledging your strengths, setting boundaries, and surrounding yourself with supportive people who uplift you. As your self-esteem grows, so does your ability to see the toxic relationship for what it is, a situation that's holding you back rather than one that defines your value. By rebuilding your self-worth, you empower yourself to make decisions that prioritize your happiness and well-being, freeing yourself from the chains of a toxic relationship. Lesson 6. Fear of starting over. The fear of starting over is a significant barrier that keeps many people locked in toxic relationships even when they know it's time to leave. The prospect of rebuilding your life from the ground up can feel overwhelming, especially after investing so much time, energy and emotion into a relationship. This fear is rooted in uncertainty, uncertainty about the future, about whether you'll find happiness again and about how you'll manage the practical and emotional challenges of moving on. Starting over means facing the unknown, and for many, the unknown is more terrifying than the pain of staying in a bad relationship. You might worry about being alone, about the financial implications, or about losing the social circle that has become intertwined with your relationship. The fear of making the wrong decision, of leaving behind the familiar for something uncertain, can paralyze you into staying put, even when every instinct tells you to go. This fear is often compounded by the stories we tell ourselves. You might think, I've already invested so much, if I leave now, it will all have been for nothing. Or, what if I never find someone else? What if this is the best I can do? These thoughts keep you stuck, clinging to a relationship that's no longer serving you, simply because the alternative seems too daunting. However, 
The reality is that starting over while challenging is also an opportunity for growth, renewal and rediscovery. It's a chance to build a life that aligns more closely with your values, needs and desires. Yes, it will take time and effort, and yes, there will be moments of doubt and struggle. But with each step you take toward rebuilding your life, you reclaim your power, your independence, and your sense of self. Overcoming the fear of starting over involves shifting your perspective from one of loss to one of possibility. It's about trusting that you have the strength and resilience to create a better future, even if it means stepping into the unknown. By embracing the opportunity to start fresh, you open the door to new experiences, healthier relationships, and a life that is truly your own. Lesson 7. Normalization of Dysfunction One of the most insidious aspects of toxic relationships is the gradual normalization of dysfunction. Over time, what once seemed unacceptable or shocking can begin to feel like just another part of daily life. This process of normalization is a psychological coping mechanism. It allows you to survive in a toxic environment by convincing yourself that the behavior you're experiencing isn't as bad as it actually is. The longer you stay, the more these behaviors become ingrained in your reality, making it increasingly difficult to recognize the dysfunction for what it is. In the beginning, toxic behaviors like constant criticism, emotional manipulation or controlling actions might stand out and cause you distress. But as time goes on, you may start to rationalize these behaviors or make excuses for them. Everyone has bad days, you might tell yourself, or it's not always like this. This rationalization helps you cope with the discomfort and pain but it also dulls your awareness, making it harder to see just how harmful the situation has become. This normalization is often reinforced by the toxic partner who might downplay their actions, shift the blame onto you, or even suggest that their behavior is normal in all relationships. Over time, you might come to believe that what you're experiencing is typical or that your expectations are too high. This distorted view can trap you in the relationship as you lose sight of what a healthy, respectful partnership should look like. Breaking free from the normalization of dysfunction requires a conscious effort to step back and objectively evaluate the relationship. This might involve talking to trusted friends or family members who can provide an outside perspective or seeking the guidance of a therapist who can help you identify unhealthy patterns. It's about reawakening your sense of what is right and fair and recognizing that just because something has become familiar doesn't mean it's acceptable. By acknowledging and rejecting the normalization of dysfunction, you empower yourself to demand better for your life. You reclaim the ability to distinguish between healthy and unhealthy behaviors, which is crucial for making decisions that protect your well-being and help you move toward a more fulfilling future. Lesson 8. Investment in the Relationship the investment you've made in a relationship, whether it's time, emotions, shared experiences, or even financial resources, can be one of the strongest anchors keeping you tied to a toxic partnership. This phenomenon, often referred to as the sunk cost fallacy, is the tendency to continue investing in something because you've already put so much into it. Even when it's clear that the relationship is damaging or unlikely to improve, the more you've invested, the harder it becomes to walk away. Because leaving feels like admitting that all those years, efforts and emotions were for nothing. This investment often includes shared milestones, memories and significant life events. You've built a life together, intertwined your daily routines and perhaps even planned a future. The idea of letting all of that go can feel overwhelming, almost like erasing a part of your identity. This is why many people stay. They can't bear the thought of starting over and losing everything they've worked so hard to build. 
However, it's important to recognize that continuing to invest in a relationship that isn't healthy is not a wise use of your resources, whether those resources are emotional, mental, or financial. Just because you've invested a lot doesn't mean you should keep pouring more into a situation that isn't serving you. The real value lies in your ability to learn from the experience, to take the lessons you've gained and apply them to creating a better future for yourself. The decision to leave isn't about negating the investment you've made. It's about acknowledging that the relationship has run its course and that continuing to stay will only lead to further emotional depletion. It's about valuing yourself enough to stop throwing good energy after bad and instead redirecting that energy toward healing, growth and building a life that aligns with your true needs and desires. By recognizing the sunk cost fallacy at play, you can break free from the trap of investment and start prioritizing your well-being over the past. It's a courageous step, but one that ultimately leads to greater peace, self-respect and the opportunity to invest in a future that truly fulfills you. Lesson 9. Emotional Manipulation Emotional manipulation is one of the most subtle yet powerful tactics that can keep you ensnared in a toxic relationship. It's a form of psychological control where your partner distorts reality, plays on your emotions and shifts blame to keep you off balance and dependent on them. This manipulation can be so insidious that you may not even realize it's happening until you're deeply entrenched in the relationship. The manipulator often uses guilt, fear and confusion to make you question your perceptions, your worth and your decisions, making it incredibly difficult to see the situation clearly and take steps to leave. The most dangerous aspect of emotional manipulation is its ability to erode your sense of self. Over time, you may start to believe the negative things your partner says about you, internalizing their criticisms and doubts as your own. This can lead to a cycle of self-blame, where you feel responsible for the problems in the relationship and believe that if you could just change or do better, everything would improve. The manipulator reinforces this belief by alternating between affection and criticism, keeping you constantly guessing and striving for their approval. Recognizing emotional manipulation is the first step toward breaking free from it. It requires you to trust your instincts and acknowledge the red flags even if they're subtle. You need to reclaim your narrative separating the truth of your feelings and experiences from the distortions your partner has imposed. This might involve seeking support from trusted friends, family, or a therapist who can provide perspective and help you see the situation more clearly. Breaking free from emotional manipulation isn't easy, but it's crucial for your mental and emotional well-being. By recognizing the manipulative tactics being used against you, you can begin to reclaim your power and make decisions that are in your best interest. It's about understanding that love should never be about control and that a healthy relationship is built on mutual respect, trust and genuine care, not on manipulation and deceit. Lesson 10. Trauma Bonding Trauma bonding is a psychological phenomenon that can create a deep, almost unbreakable attachment to a toxic partner, even when the relationship is harmful. It occurs when the cycle of abuse, whether emotional, physical or psychological, is interspersed with moments of kindness, affection or relief. These intermittent positive reinforcements create a powerful emotional bond as the contrast between the highs and lows becomes intensely addictive. The unpredictability of this cycle keeps you trapped as you become increasingly focused on the moments of kindness as a sign that things might get better. In trauma bonding, the victim often feels a strong connection to the abuser because of the shared experiences of intense emotional pain and relief. The abuser may also exploit vulnerabilities such as past trauma or low self-esteem to deepen this bond. Over time, this bond can become so strong that leaving the relationship feels impossible even though you know it's harmful. 
You may feel like you need the abuser, that they're the only one who understands you, or that you can't survive without them. This bond is not based on love or mutual respect, but on the trauma and emotional turmoil you've endured together. Breaking free from a trauma bond requires a deep understanding of the psychological dynamics at play. It's crucial to recognize that the intensity of the bond is not a reflection of love, but of the manipulation and control exerted by the abuser. Healing from a trauma bond often involves seeking professional help, as it can be challenging to untangle these complex emotions on your own. Therapy can help you process the trauma, rebuild your sense of self, and develop healthier patterns of relating to others. Overcoming trauma bonding is a process that takes time, patience, and self-compassion. It involves relearning what healthy love looks like and setting boundaries that protect your well-being. By breaking the trauma bond, you free yourself from the cycle of abuse and open the door to a future where relationships are based on trust, respect, and genuine care. It's a difficult journey, but one that leads to healing, empowerment, and ultimately freedom from the chains of a toxic relationship. Imagine finally breaking free from the chains that have held you back, stepping into a life where your relationships are built on respect, love, and mutual growth. The insights we've uncovered today are more than just knowledge. They're keys to unlocking the door to your freedom. But here's the catch. These lessons only become powerful when you apply them. So, which one resonated with you the most? What's your next step toward reclaiming your life? I challenge you to take action. Drop a comment below and let me know which lesson hit home for you. Share your thoughts. Your story might just inspire someone else who's struggling with the same issues. And if this video gave you some much needed clarity, go ahead and hit that like button. It's a small gesture, but it helps spread these life-changing insights to others who need them. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. We're building a community dedicated to personal growth, healing, and thriving beyond toxic relationships. By subscribing, you're not just joining a channel, you're joining a movement. And here's a little secret. Those who subscribe and comment, I'm ready, will be entered into a special shout-out in our next video. Your journey doesn't end here. It's just beginning. Together, we can turn these lessons into actions that transform your life. Thanks for watching, and remember, you have the power to change your story. What will you do with it?